you want to start stripping before the fly hits the bottom. So the, so the line is still up above. Now you're, now you're pulling it up towards you. Eventually, if you strip slowly, it's going to get down onto the bottom. So what we end up doing is we end up throwing right to the bank. Let that thing drop down as fast as it can, and then we strip. And so the fly gets lower and lower and lower as we, as we uh, fish the bank, coming, coming back down. And what we end up doing then is we end up letting the fly drop down the edge instead of making the line come down and then dragging it across the bottom on that. And I t I'm tying this in a size 2 because uh, the smaller size, size 4, the shank is too short to put a double eye on it. It's an Eagle Claw, model number 413, no. There you go. And here's the hooks for you. Just pass them around. Now, it, it doesn't seem to matter where we go for stripers. The chartreuse and white works on, er on everywhere we go. We can put on all different types of stuff, whistlers, um, foam, foam flies, uh, all, all sorts of stuff. And we always end up going right back, right back to the Clouser chartreuse and white. So you can tie it as heavy as you want. And I usually like to I usually like to tie on the eyes. And I like since I'm using red thread and I put red between them, I e either use these these uh, white barbells which are lead and painted, or I use these uh, I use these chartreuse barbell eyes called Realize Plus. Okay. So usually in my combination I'll put on I'll put on a Real Eyes Plus. One with the eyeball already already uh, put and the second one I just put a plain barbell. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it's silver or gold, I usually like the gold. I'll put I'll put together a a set that I normally like. I like the, uh, I think it's called a 332nd size eyeball and a uh, eighth inch size, uh, or what is that? You take one of the ones that looks like real eyes and then take one. Yeah, the barbell, the barbell I use is small, just slightly smaller than the real eyes. So uh, what you want to start with is a fairly heavy thread. Okay, I'm using a uh, Unithread Big Fly, okay, and I want to start the thread right close to the hook bend, and I go forwards until I hit the bend, and then I go backwards over it, alright, and then what that does is it locks the thread down, and it keeps the thread from turning, and I, what I'm doing is laying a base. What I'm doing is I'm just laying a base for the uh, for the eye, so that when the eye gets on there, it's not going to twist. I go about half the hook shank, and then I come forward just a little bit, about two or three wraps, and I put the first eye. I put the uh, non the rear non pupil pupil eye. Yeah, the rear eyeball on first. I start with three wraps going crosswise like that, and then I straighten it out and put three more wraps going crosswise that way, and then I put a base underneath it. And once I do that, it's still a little bit loose, and it's still going to, uh, to move around on you if you don't secure it with something. And that something is super glue. Or if you like head cement. And I just put a drop. 
I put a drop on top, and then I go over it several more times. And then I'll go under the base of it again. And then I like to put a little drop on the bottom because what that does is it forms a hard shell on the, uh, on the thread. Okay, then I come forward fairly close to the bend and I do the same thing with the real eyes. I go through it three or four times, pull it down tight, twist it over, put the thread in between. Okay, and then I go underneath the base again about four or five times and then put a drop of super glue again. Top and bottom. Okay, and you'll notice that there's a space in between. In between the barbells, just like that. All right. That is where my gills are going to go. This is made by Hairline and it's called Crystal Hackle. You can see that it has uh, longer fibers on it. What that's going to do is it's going to stick out when I wrap it on there. And you can see the red sticks out quite a bit more than that other stuff did. front and then I'll pull it back. Okay. And I'll take my bucktail and I want a square tie-in right here so I want to make it square and what I end up doing is putting a couple of wraps around it and then pull tight. Pull tight. Pull tight as I wrap down on it. I work my way forwards and then I'll come back with it out over here. Now in order to tie it down behind the back eyes you have to go over the top first like this and put your thread behind the last eye. Come over the top, trap it down and you don't want to, you don't want to, you, you want to start a little bit loose and then start going tighter and tighter and tighter. Go, all, go really tight right around till you hit almost to where the, you hit the bend and then you have to start loosening up a little bit. And that, what that does is it keeps the, the fibers together. You got to go kind of loose and then you've got to come back and then go tight again. If you want, you can put uh, head cement on there or a little bit of super glue just so that it doesn't it doesn't loosen up on you while you're while you're 
um, fishing with it. And then I take a little wire. Uh, like, like before, when I tie the uh, woolly buggers, in order to keep the chenille that I put on for the body from, uh, from sliding down and coming off like, a, like an old sock, I put wire through it. You can see I bent it because I want to bend it over so that the wire has no chance of coming out now. And I tie it down, same way I tied down the, the tail. And then right here, I like to use uh, chartreuse for the crystal chenille. I like, this stuff is uh, J Fairs again, and it's called short shuck. Cut off a chunk. <clears throat> Throw it over there for you guys. Tie it in at the back end. Then wrap it forwards, creating a body. And what you want to avoid with this material is sliding your hand down because if you slide your hand down the crystal chenille, you'll strip the midsection of it. So wherever you grab it, grab it tight. And then work it through, make yourself a, a body. And then right when you get to the back, come over the top and tie it off. Clip it. Now, what I want to do is I want to counter wrap this chenille so that it doesn't have a tendency to slip off. This will pretty much... You don't have to do this if you don't mind tying a bunch of these flies. But if you want your fly to last you through several fish, you're going to want to make it kind of bomb proof. And the wire definitely helps. The next thing I do is I come over this direction and I'll come right between the red stuff and I'll turn it upside down. What I want to do at this point is I want to change the angle of the hook so that I'm working on top of the vise, like that. Try not to mess up the tail. Then I take the chartreuse, that's, chart that's fluorescent chartreuse, okay? This is just a regular chartreuse. I like the regular chartreuse better, but I don't know if it matters to the fish because I, I've used this for quite a while and I still catch fish. So fluorescent chartreuse or this stuff, yeah, I don't know. I like using this stuff here. And what I do is choose about the same amount of hair that I chose for the, the bottom portion of it. clip it out and then you don't want to make these you don't want to make these too thick you don't want to make them super thick unless you're trying to imitate like a bluegill or something like that the way I tie it is different than most recipes you'll see for a regular clouser the regular clousers are tied really thin and they're tied so thin that they look like just a piece of this sticking straight back like that if you look at mine, mine are kind of bulky, all right? You'll see that they, they flare out a little bit. I tend to like the bulky ones a little bit more. 
but they say that the uh, thinner ones fish better. Well, they fall faster for sure. Yeah, they fall faster. But that's the whole reason for the double, double eyes on this. And you can change the sink rate of it by putting either lead behind it using two of the same size barbells or using lead on both of them. But I'm, I'll, I'm here to tell you, if you use lead on both of those things, tie them in a smaller size, four or two, because if you tie the one aughts or two aughts, those flies going through the air are deadly. Especially once you get them sharpened. What I like to do is I like to crimp the barb down and then I like to take a file and file it down so that the tip is really sharp. By the time I get that down there, the, the little barb point that I folded over falls off. It's so, it's so thin at that point that it, it'll actually fall off. So what I do now is in this section where it comes up and bends, an extra long piece right in front of the, fur, the, the, the eye so that you have a nice flat area to, to tie it down. Okay, well, next time. And what I like to do is pull the hair right down the center where the hook is. Oh, this is going to be a problem. Okay. The problem I have is I had to make the hair come over the eye. We'll do a better job on the second one or third one. And what I like to do is I like to build up the head at this point. Uh, what I do next is, or actually before I put the hair on there, I should have put the flashaboo. We'll do it on the next one. This material is uh, Flashaboo Mirage and it's number 3065. I like this one because it's uh, pink and purple. Don't ask me why. I just started using it and I started catching a ton of fish with it and uh, it just works great. So I used uh, 3065. I also use this one here, which is just the plain 3062, and it's chartreuse. Okay. And I take about anywhere from six to eight, depending on how much flash you want in there. And I like to make it just longer than the wing. I like to let it hang out a little bit. If that's half, Take half of that and tie it in right here. Like Dan Bland, how you want a flash tail? Yeah. If I don't want as much flash, I'll use half as much and double it. And if you take a look in here, you'll see that this one is tied short because I didn't want as much flash in there. Sometimes you can have too much flash. Sometimes you can't have enough. It all depends on the fish. So I'll tie it along each side like that. And don't worry about not covering everything up at this point in time because you still have one more piece of material that you need to put on there. You can use a dark green or you can use a light olive. The color I actually like to use is the peacock and that's really dark. It's much darker than this. It looks almost black when you when you put it on. But then when it goes in the sun it uh, it comes out a little bit and you can uh, 
me being colorblind, I can tell that it's not black at that point in time. But for most of the time, I just use a light olive because uh, in a lot of, t lot of cases, I'm fishing more stained water. And the stained water, the lighter the colors, the, the more they're able to pick it out. That's when you really want to use a lot of, uh, of uh, flashaboo material. So on this, I just look in there, pull out about 12 to 15 fibers, <clears throat> clip it off this way. I fold it in half, make it a little short on the bottom, and I tie it in. about three wraps on it. Then I'll take the longer section and come right over the top of that. And you can see it's not much longer, but it is. And that kind of gives it a little bit of a feathered effect. Keep it on top. And then wrap over it. And now what you want to do is you want to build the bulk up on the head. Just make sure you leave enough room for the eye and then we'll finish it. Now, when I talk about bomb proof, um, on, on these flies I normally don't double whip finish it because I'm going to put adhesive on there. The first thing I do is I'll put on head cement and I'll put it on pretty liberally. put it on there and I'll put it on the hair that goes over the back of the eye. Okay. I'll let that harden up and when I get, I, I usually sit and tie eight to ten of these things at a time and I'll let them sit till they're dry and then afterwards I'll pull all the hairs together, and if you look at this fly here, if you didn't pay any attention to it, you'll see that you'll see that the head is completely epoxy. And I use a 30-minute epoxy because I want working time with it so that I can coat the heads of these things. And I try to get the clearest stuff I can because a lot of times when you're casting, these things are so heavy. Like Dean says, your casts aren't perfect every time. If you drop the cast, in other words, you let go of your double haul hand, you'll pull the fly and the fly will drop with the line and it'll come in and it'll smack the side of the boat. And if you're fishing in a, an aluminum boat, you'll get what this thing looks like. The eyes are all chipped off. The the epoxy is chipped off, everything's like that. But if you want it to last longer and you want the eyes to stay on there, you have to epoxy the whole head. So what I'll do is I'll pass this around again and you can take a look a little closer at the epoxy on the head.